wow. That's the sun. I swear I haven't seen the sun in 66 days. But I've... Oh! Hello, folks. Welcome back for I Am The One, The Only, a Hobo Tom. It's a weird show because... Oh, I'm... I'm uh oh out of energy drink, darn it. I gotta reload after a little nap, I think. But that's okay, yes. Um, last night, I kinda said, I need a Tranquilo. I need some rest. So I said, nope. I'm gonna take a little break. So I've watched it, and, I've, and now it's time for my review of Raw. But before I do that, oh boy, was it a busy weekend for people. Let's see here, let's get some, let's get some notes started. Oh, also, by the way, El Hijo del Hobo Vagabundo, I don't, I forget the number, Spaghetti, you, sir, were only a 50-50 booker. The match card does not lie, even though there was the one that was canceled. You did get your Stone Cold locks right, though. And you got the match of the night right, too. Oh, you know what? And that, was a, that wasn't even a snooze. Actually, none of the matches were really boring. Except for that one. And that was a pre-show. That almost doesn't count. But you know what, sir? Because you got those Stone Cold locks right, that's half a point each. So that's one. And then, so you actually got... Like a 5.5 out of 8 because they canceled the one. So you, sir, might know, and I say this, you might know what's going on in the head of one Stephanie McMahon. And to all the others. Ooh, I do need a pen, though. Yeah, so it was a rather interesting weekend. Let's see. Let's start off with some stuff. Who do I have? I have a lot of people to thank. Kelly! Thank you very much. You, either sir or madame, have earned that six count. Because you won twice.
atrocious hair. Now I'm Jeff. You, sir, are that true master of the air guitar. Madman Hex, you're just that crazy wild man with his briefcase boombox. See, I'm going to butcher this name, so I apologize already. I think I showed you bits of his YouTube channel. I honestly forget that, but just in case, let's see here. Ogunwale Isaac TV. You, sir, can crawl out of here. And Shiz Tech, just by your name alone, you, sir, always win by Dirty Pen. And now let's get to this video because I I, I I should be at my other job, but I'm taking kind of a late lunch. So I have to get this kind of squared away pretty quickly. And I do, and I would like to have this up for my nap and or before I go to the gym. So that way I have a clean slate when I go to do my live show a little bit later today. Yeah, and it's sunny outside. You know, like I don't have to turn the lights on. So I have... All this natural sunlight coming in. And wow, it was an interesting Raw. It was a, actually a pretty good Raw. Again, this is one of those instances where the Raw after the pay-per-view is actually pretty good. I do not like the fact that they had that Oscar rematch. They didn't need that whatsoever. I like Andrade's trash talking, how he no longer needs Lena Vega. And that Angel Garza is the weak link. There are some very good things. And of course, we had the Legend Training, which was pretty cool. So the show starts off. We have, woo, Rick Flair, woo, come out, uh, along with, well, it's the big show, uh, along with Christian, and I'm a sexy man, sexy boy, HBK, the Heartbreak Kid, Sean. Michaels came out and they congratulate Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre leaves an open challenge. Uh, Randy Orton comes on, makes a promo. He gets upset. 
he leaves the building or does he? We shall see. Let's see, so my notes are kind of jumbled because I watched it a couple different times. Um, so I think it starts off the first match. We have Asuka versus Lena Vega. They, they do a recap. This match was not as good as the first match. There was no reason for this match to take place. Asuka won clean. Um, yes, Asuka was upset that Zelina Vega kicked her when she when when they exchanged bows. Bad sportsmanship, Zelina Vega. But it just didn't seem as smooth. It seems like they were tr trying too much. There was no flow to the match. Very spotchy. And not that fight feeling like, oh, they're like really fighting. No, this is just, this is, for lack of a better term, just, just sloppy wrestling. Zelina Vega kind of had that weird, I don't know, she tried to get on that, that sloppy, like, stretch move on Asuka, but it just seems so contrived. Asuka seemed to really help her out. The good, um, again, Asuka's, Asuka can normally elevate someone. In this case, even Asuka made it look bad and not to Oscar's fault Selena Vega was just not on her game um Selena Vega went out to do a dive on Oscar Oscar hit her midair with a kick that that was so beautifully well timed and had and it had that natural time to which is good um Vega tried the standing kimura on Oscar trying to weaken her arms uh, she goes up for a moonsault however Oscar brings the knees up puts in the Oscar lock match over Oscar retains in a rematch, this probably should not have happened. That was a ham sandwich of a match. Ooh, beep beep. Whoa, whoa, phone's blowing up. Whoa, super fun blowing up. On my brother. Oh, okay. So you can be like DoorDash or Grubhub. Okay. As long as you get stuff. Smiley face. Where's smiley face at? Oh, I have to respond to that other text too. I'm gonna be like Grubhub, just like dropping off Christmas and well, birthday and Christmas gifts. That's a whole other issue though. And then there's an Andrade promo that was pretty good, good as Zelina Vegas leaving. She's like, I don't need you, loser. Get out of here. No outside terms. Oh, okay. I'm drum ridden because mainly I don't care. Like, I don't like wearing the mask. And hopefully they resend that order soon. Oh, I think another month. Well, we'll see what happens. That's okay. I haven't gotten any nasty. I'm trying to look at my work stuff and I haven't gotten any nasty emails yet. No one's required conferences. God, meetings. Death by meetings, I swear. Only good news is that. Yeah, there are new meetings. <laughs> the good news is, is there is no bad news for now. Um, then, uh, starts, uh, so Andrade starts trash talking, dumps Selena Vega, says, you, you're no good, senora, get out of here. I don't need you in my life. That loser Angel Guards is obviously a weak link. I'm going to go back to being a singles competitor. I don't know if they're teasing the breakup because of Garza's injury. I know they don't know what it is. It was rumored to be a quad tear. Quad tears are freaking bad. But, like, that's like a year. If you like tweak the knee or tweak the hip, that's different. Um, depending on how bad it is, if it's just like a pure tweak, that's fine. I have. Oh. A friend needs to vent for a couple of minutes. Uh, let's see here. So uh, Andrade stays in the ring. He says, Yeah, I want to fight someone. Oh, bask in his glory. 
Yeah, don't make that proclamation. I don't know, whatever. Um, I'll see that when she stops typing, whatever. Um, yeah, don't make that proclamation if you're not ready for the consequences. So, Keith Lee, oh, bask in his glory, comes out. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, for this match, uh, Lee just manhandles Andrade. Andrade, whenever he goes after the legs, is smart. I'll tell you what, I was surprised. Keith Lee needed a drop down. He did a leapfrog and drop down. There was a story with, I want to say, no interview, no expedite. <laughs> um, uh, I think it was Diesel gave the story where he was, where he, he did the drop down and leapfrog, and uh, his the one guy said, maybe it was Dusty Rhodes said, don't you ever do that again. You're too big. You should just be there plowing over people. You should be killing people. You should be mothering these suckers. You don't need to jump or do anything. You're so to tackle him into the next decade, baby. So, yeah. So, again, Keith Lee, even though it is a great show of athleticism by Keith Lee, he doesn't really need to do that. Um, again, then Andrade began to work over the knee. Uh, he got Lee into the corner, hit the double knees. And for some reason, Andrade jumped up like he was going to do a Huracrana. Got caught, though, because he was way too high. And then he turned, and then Keith Lee turned that Huracrana attempt into the Spirit Bomb. And that was the end of Andrade. This was actually pretty good. I do like the fact that Andrade has that fire. Maybe he'll go back to Tranquilo Andrade. Who knows? Yep. Blowing up, baby. Plus Master of School. Cool. School is good. Let's see, where is Nerd? There, there's Nerdy person. Nerdy smile of face. Yeah, it's mounting. I don't know what's mounting, but that's okay. Um. And then it was the, the Hurt Business, so there was that match. Good classic cheeseburger match. Then there was a Hurt Business somewhere up in the classy um, booths, probably at the Amway Center. Someone was at their table. They just sat down. They moved catering, I guess, to one of the kind of corporate sponsored areas that's always nice to see those booths that look absolutely amazing at the amway center and one day i walked around look gorgeous one day i might be able to to get in there i doubt it though uh let's see i don't want to sell my house and yeah whatever i'll, I'll look at that later before my nap so yeah they kicked the one guy out he leaves his food there. So they get some more food, which is always good. Although I'm, I'm not too sure about eating someone else's food, especially during the COVID-19 thing, especially when two, I think at least one member of Retribution ding, was out because of COVID-19. I have the knowledge. Um, and so that led to that. Then the Mysterio family stuff. Uh, Dominic jumps Murphy. Seth, uh, after Seth came in, um, there, this was kind of like all discombobulated. The 24-7 stuff, the trade-off of the belts with the Drew Gulak. I think that was a little bit of a recap. Then we had the King's Court with the Dominic family and Alia. Uh, so, and this led to, to a, well, eventual match. Because Leah's like, you can't. She did that stupid younger sister thing. It's like, listen, your parents and your older brother know better. Always. Unless, yeah, because because even baby Guerreros. Oh, that would be a great woman's tag team. Um, Eddie's daughter teams up with Mysterio's daughter. That would be great. Um, so there was that. Then there was then I forgot the order because I kind of watched it in like jumbled as a jumbled mess. Natalia and Lana taking on Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. And whoa, this, folks, is the Battle 
of the blondes. Bimbos. But yeah, <laughs> Bim yeah, that that and Kmart moms. Um, Mandy, again, she can deliver a good suplex. She's really strong looking. Maybe things will work out more so for her. Maybe she's better as a tag team partner. Who knows? Versus being a singles uh, competitor. Um, so eventually, Mandy tags in Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke gets her summoned until Natalia and Lana work over Dana. Oh, yeah, by the way, Lana and Natalia came out like the old HLA, the, the lesbians, when they came out like holding hands and stuff. I'm all for that stuff. It just looked kind of weird. It just looked like a, again, that weird flashback. From when nothing was good in WWE way back in the day. Actually, in like the 2000s. I'll say, yeah, between like 2000. When I stop watching. Between like 2005. Yeah, for a good like five year period, like it was pure garbage. It was neat the first time, but then when you, especially when Bischoff showed up, but then it just got old. So yeah, I hope they don't, I hope they don't do anything stupid like that. Or just go to the one extreme for one show and then get it all out of your system, you silly writers. Uh, but Natalia and Lana, they work over Dana with double teams. That was some terrible kick by Lana. It was like she was trying to go for like a sliding knee, but then like, she didn't slide far enough, so she just, like, kicked Dana. It, 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 Lana's not that good. Um, Mandy eventually gets the hot tag. Again, it just got messy. It wasn't that entertaining to watch besides, again, blonde-haired bimbos and Walmart moms. Or, or Kmart moms. So, yeah, uh, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke won. They defeated, and Alana just keeps on getting buried, so it doesn't even matter. This was a can of soup. Skip it. Or just watch the entrances and say, yep, I've seen all I needed to see. Seriously, talk about that match. Then come back. Um, we'll match our truth and I don't know. So, so here's where I think Kevin Owens came in here. So Kevin Owens, Alistair Black match was amazing. This felt like a Ring of Honor Kevin Steen versus Tommy Ends match. It was that good. Like, um, again, starts off really as a brawl. Kevin Owens is upset that that he gets jumped all. That he Kevin Owens is the guy that gets jumped all the time now. That's not necessarily good. Alistair Black again. He was beat up. Kevin Owens couldn't... His buddy Kevin Owens couldn't do anything, so he has to take out his aggression on someone. Starts as a brawl. I'll tell you what. There's so some hard-hitting strikes by both. Kevin Owens did an amazing senton from the apron to the floor. He has, like, perfected that move. Uh, hard-hitting strikes by both. Blast kicks. That was one that, like, nailed Kevin Owens in the throat. And I swear, Kevin Owens tried to go, like, Okay, ref, stop it, stop it. X, 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 X. I can't make this X hard enough. But yeah, so I don't know what happened with that. Um, again, it could have just been a slip. I'm sure Alistair Black is the ultimate professional. Kevin Owens like realizes things can go wrong. I mean, it was very easy to slip from here up to here. Or if you kind of just bend over the wrong thing or there's a weird dip in the ring. Things happen. It wasn't like they were potatoing each other, although it looked like it. I'll tell you what, they're both, they throw amazing punches and forearms and elbows. They look so vicious. Again, really fun match. Um, Kevin Owens eventually does win. Because I want to say in this one, yeah. This one or the other one. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because because Alistair Black got disqualified. He showed the ref. You cannot put your hands on the referee. The referee said, no, no, no. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. Kevin Owens, you win. Go home, buddy. You're the victor. Kevin Owens didn't seem happy. Kevin Owens wins. 
If it wasn't for that ref DQ, it probably would have been a cheeseburger match. And we have R Truth taking a triple threat match for the 24 7 belt. I do like the fact that they do have the 24 7 belt. Oh, wow. I don't even know what that is. Um, so that's always good to see. Uh, Drew Gulak was there, Tozawa. For the most part, Drew and Tozawa double team our truth for a while and you can always tell because drew would be upset because Tazawa went for the pin so drew drew pulled Tazawa off uh truth had his semi come back Tazawa and drew go back to double team they did that double stretch which would have been interesting because i don't know how they would have awarded the match if they if they both got the tap out that would have been interesting and um, there's all this other stuff um rough chest i feel bad for her she like ate a bump she was just at the wrong place at the wrong time uh, R Truth got stuck in the gulag. Tazawa, however, did not want R Truth to tap out, so he decided to do his amazing senton. And he does have one of the best sentons ever onto Drew Gulak. Eventually, R Truth channeled Sean Cena because you can't see him. Did the AA uh, R Truth retains his belt? Decent, you know, it was good. Cheeseburger match. And we have Dominic taking on Murphy. Uh, just starts as a brawl. This is like like the brother just like wants to beat up the guy who's like chasing his sister. That's kind of what it felt like. Uh, starts inside the ring, then goes outside the ring. Uh, Murphy tossed poor Dominic into the, the true barricades. I uh, got him back on the ring, just like stepped on the back of his neck. Vicious, viciousness. I like that. I like that in my wrestlers. Yeah, vicious. Uh, Murphy. Try to drag pin by grabbing the tights, didn't work. Uh, Murphy and uh, Dom Dominic Mysterio came back a little bit until Murphy hit a pump handle, a, a pump, yeah, pump knee strike, whatever he calls it. Um, again, Dominic, I'll tell you what, darn Dominic, you've learned so much, you've come so far. Just truly amazing stuff. He does a good job, Breaker, the Tornado D, he looks smooth enough. I stumbled a little bit, but yeah, that's that, that was nothing. Um, and then Murphy, again, previously was actually going underneath the ring looking for stuff. Dominic found what he was looking for, and it was a kendo stick. At this point, the sister comes comes out, says, No, don't hurt him. Like, Dominic's like, No, I'm going to beat him because of, of what he's done, he, what he's, how he's twisted your mind. But. But Murphy is not like Seth. Murphy is a good man. It's like, no, I don't care. They're both in cahoots. So then the si so the sister comes out, distracts Dominic, uh, costs him the match. Murphy wins. Then the sister just, wow. Way late, Dominic. Dominic, you know, you have to put your sister in, your pla in, in her place sometimes. So that, I don't know. That whole, that whole idea tends to solve a lot of issues before they actually start. Oh, that's what it is. Indeed. And then we had the Hurt Business taking on Ricochet, Apollo Crews, and Ali. Um, Cedric Alexander's off at the Hurt Camp. He's probably learning how to beat up people some more. Starts off as a brawl. Woo! Uh, Ricochet, he flies. Why they don't use Ricochet more often? Oh, I have to do one thing quickly. Yes, I want to stay on that page. Um, I don't know why they don't utilize him better. It is what it is, though. Uh, let's see here. MVP again. It's very strike heavy. They all get their, their kind of licks in. Uh, Ricochet gets beat up. Paul Cruz gets beat up. Ali's kind of like the infinite freshman there. Bobby Lashley. Uh, the lights the lights do flicker. They tease Retribution. Now if someone has COVID, they're not showing up for like two weeks. Yay, two, week, two weeks without Bane! Because it's me, Batman! I've gotten COVID! 
from these plebes in Orlando. So Batman, you won't see me for two weeks. But don't worry, Batman. I bang shall return. Yes. Yep. So yeah, so they can't be there. Uh, Ricochet gets a hot tag eventually because after Apollo Crews gets gets snot knocked out of him. The flying flippy moonsault's so good. Now our fresh Ali gets in. MVP was too strong. There's a carnage outside the ring. Bodies all over the place. Ali hits a 450 splash, 450 splash on MVP. Team Ricochet, Cruz, and Ali pick up the win. I'll tell you what. I like it. That was a good surf and turf match. And then finally, for the main event of the evening, we have Drew McIntyre versus Dolph Ziggler. But he's already defended that belt. No, Dolph Ziggler is there because it's time to become glorious. Yes, the glorious one, Bobby Roode, shows up. Um, again, he goes right after the legs of Drew McIntyre. So good. Then he does the, bat, the heel back rate. This could be a revitalization of Robert Roode. This is what Robert Roode needed. He needed that reason. Uh, however, Drew McIntyre still has chops. That could, like, cut through wood, though. I mean, that, that's how he cuts wood in Scotland. He just chops him down with his bare hands. He's a beast. Uh, Roode eventually goes up. Eats. Eats a kick. Um... Yep, off the apron, uh, that reverse Alabama slam that Drew McIntyre does onto the apron, like, that's vicious. Uh, Drew then, we go to break, then Drew gets posted in the groin. Bobby Roode's smart, and he's a heel, so he can utilize all tricks in the ring. Uh, Roode does the flying clothesline that's great into the figure four. Again, so awesome. And the way, the way he applies it, it's a very classic pose. He's not overselling it. He's really trying to stretch the legs and damage. It looks it really looks like he's going after like the knees because you can tell when he grabs the foot. He just doesn't sit there with the legs, but he straightens his legs up. He's like, I'm gonna sit down on this. That's the way. That's the very quick way on how to hyperextend the knee, folks. Um, again, Drew reverses the pressure. They get up, rude, like. Two like two a with the spine buster. Arn Anderson still his best spine buster. Then it's between like Carl Anderson and, and and Bobby Roode, so it's so hard to tell. Like you could make a case depending who it is on a case by case basis. Again, Arn Anderson still number one, two and three, right there would be a a Roode and. and and Anderson, it's that like debate, like who's the greatest talker? Is it the Macho Man? Is he just because he was the Macho Man, or was it Ric Flair? Like generally, we have the Mount Rushmores. You generally have all four of those people, depending on opinion and when you actually see them. You can have so many different debates over beer, or if if it's if you're still exhausted, so, so some energy drink, as to who could be number one. For the most part, like the top five are always up there. It's just like, are you one or two? Or are you three, three and two, four, five, three, four? It gets all convoluted at the end. Um, Robert Roode did hit the glorious DDT, but Drew McIntyre kicked out of that. It was a claymore. And then that was it. Drew McIntyre wins, but the show was not over yet. This match, again, really good match. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was great to see the return of Robert Roode. It's good to see Drew McIntyre still be that monster where he can kick out of a finisher. Because again, Rude did go for that second glorious CDT. So this was good. Um, Rude looked amazing in his loss. But again, another surf and turf match. In the back of there's still two minutes to go. We have this very tall Janner looking guy. And, oh, wait a second. It was Randy Orton in a mask and hoodie. He's there. He found the Legend Suite. He has night vision goggles. 
Don't know where he got those. But he came out. He had his chair. Went to the legend suite where, again, the four legends, you, you see them interdispersed talking like a table of four almost, playing poker, doing whatever, doing what, what old guys do, I guess. And then he turned the lights off and all you heard was this chair going around. A good minute and a half of, of some some chaos noises. Maybe even Randy Orton's in charge of retribution. Who knows? Um, then you just see all four of them decked out. The place is a mess. Randy Orton <laughs> does like the true Assassin's Creed thing. He puts the chair down, calmly goes back to his little like like a uh, push cart the janitors have, puts a hood over his, his head, just kind of looks away. And like someone says, Oh, where did all the noise come from? And he just like looks away and like points over there. And like everyone leaves and Randy Orton just sneaks right away. Like no one noticed that. But that's okay. So I'll tell you what. I was entertained by this Raw. They always, for some reason, do a good job after a pay-per-view. They just need to be a little bit more consistent. This, folks, was a solid cheeseburger Raw. So as far as the rest of the week goes, um, I'm going to skip Victory Road. It's such a minor thing. I think I'm just going to tranquilo a little bit for my weekend. I'm just not... Because I don't know. Although Victory Road, they do do screwy stuff, though. I don't know. We'll see. It all depends how I feel. And if I'm working late that Saturday night. So we'll see. Um, th but definitely tonight. It's going to be my live streaming of Impact Wednesday's AEW review. This video is going to get up as soon as I can. I'm off Thursday. I have nothing to do, which is good. I need that day off. Uh, Friday is going to be SmackDown. Saturday, uh, Victory Road. We'll see. Sunday, I'm off. Tranquilo for a little bit. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Again, if you want to be like Kelly, Nemjeff, Madman Axe, uh, Ogwale, Isaac TV, Shiz Tech, especially if you're on YouTube. I'm going to start doing that. Like on my live stream, so I say, hey, this guy checked me out. He subscribed to me. Check him out. Subscribe to him. Share that. Maybe I can boost up things. So I know I did get like, like I think one or two new subscribers. So that's always a good thing. And keep on checking me out. I will try one day to get to go wrestling. I hope they do it back on Fridays, but you never know. Especially, especially since Florida's opened up, they might change stuff. Again, everyone take care out there, and I'll well, see you in...